Hi guys, welcome back to the session. In the today's session, we will learn about SOAP Web Service in Automation Anywhere A2019. So let's get started by understanding what is a SOAP Web Service. So any web service that complies to SOAP Web Service specifications defined by W3C, that is World Wide Web Consortium, is called a SOAP Web Service. Now let's look into this SOAP web service specifications based on which a web service is categorized as a SOAP web service. So let's look into this and SOAP web service specifications is categorized into basic and extended. And in the basic, in the basic we have the specifications as SOAP, Vistel and UDDI. So any web service that follows these three specifications can be called a SOAP web service. And then we have the extended specifications as well, which are useful to the enterprise. And in the extended, we have the specifications as WS security, policy, WSI and WS BPEL. So we will look into this extended specification in some other session. In the today's session, we will follow the basic specifications. So let's get started by understanding this SOAP specification. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol and it is a protocol or rule which defines how two applications will communicate to each other over the web. So let's say that there is a client machine which is a service consumer and there is a server machine which is a service provider and they want to communicate between each other as a request and response pair. So SOAP states that exchange of information or message occurs in a common format between this client and the server machine and that common format is an XML format. Also the XML message must have the structure of SOAP message. So according to SOAP specification this client and the server machine will communicate in the form of XML format as a SOAP message. So what is this SOAP message? Let's try to understand that. Now this SOAP message is nothing but an XML document containing the following elements. The element envelope that defines the start and the end of the message. The element body which contains the XML data comprising the message being sent. The next element is header. It contains any optional attribute of the element and the fault element which is an optional fault element that provides information about the error that occurs while processing the message. So the XML document which contains these elements can be considered as a SOAP message. Now this envelope and the body elements are mandatory elements and this header and the fault are the optional elements. So this is an example of a SOAP message which is in the form of XML format having the mandatory element that is envelope and the body. So you can consider this XML as a SOAP message. And now that we are familiar with the SOAP specification, let's look into the WSDL specification. So let's say that this service consumer wants to use the web service provided by this service provider. Well, in such a case, this service consumer would like to know all the details about the web service, such as the functionalities, what are the functionalities the web service provides, what are the parameters provided by the web service, what is the return type of the web service. So all these details, this consumer, this service consumer would like to know about the web service. Well, how it can be done? It can be done with the help of the WSDL file. So what this service provider do? The service provider publishes a WSDL file which describes all the information about the web service. And once the service provider publishes this WSDL file, the service consumer can use this WSDL file to get all the information about the web service. So yes, this WSDL stands for Web Service Description Language and it is an XML format used for describing the web services such as the functionalities, parameters, return type of the web service. Now how this service provider publishes this WSDL file? So this service provider publishes this WSDL file on an online directory and that is called UDDI. So web service provider publishes the web service through WSDL 
on an online directory from where the consumers can query and search the web services and this online directory is called UDDI that is universal description discovery and integration so now that we are familiar with the soap web service and its specifications let's jump into the automation anywhere and let's quickly create a project over there so this is a website which provides sample web service of calculator if you open this service description so this is a visual file this is a visual url where we have all the information about the web service we will look into it in detail a bit later if you move back to the web service so this web service provides four operations that is add divide multiply and subtract if you open this add so this add is used to add two integers so here you see this is the request here we send two integers in the form of int a and int b this is the request and in the response we will get the addition of those two integers under this add result so i'm going to quickly create a project in automation anywhere to work with this web service so i will move to automation anywhere this is the control loop of automation anywhere a2019 let's quickly create a new bot so for that we will move to bots my bots and here let's click on create new bot and let's keep the name over here as soap demo and let's click on create and edit and here we are in the edit taskbot page let's quickly search for the soap web service package from here so this is the soap web service package where have we have this soap web service action let's drag and drop this action over here and let's see what all details we need to provide under this soap web service so first of all we need to connect to visdel through uri or file so here we have the option to connect to visdel using uri or file so we are going to go with this option using uri we have the visdel in the form of uri for this web service let's copy this one from here and let's paste it over here and if i move a bit down the next thing with us is to provide the service and the port so all these information will be available in the visdel file as we learnt all the details of the soap web service is present inside the visdel file so i will move to the visdel file and here i'm going to search for the service and the port if you scroll a bit down here you see we have the service name as calculator and the port as calculator soap so i'm going to copy this service name from here and i'm going to paste that service name over here similarly i'm going to pick up the port name as well so this is my port name so let's copy this one as well and let's paste it over here next we can choose the soap version from here as well so let's go with 1.1 and then we need to select the operation now this operation information will also be placed in the visdel file we learnt all the details of the web service will be placed inside the visdel file so let's move to visdel again and let's search for the operation so if i move a bit up over here here you see the operations are present the operation name is add then the operation name is subtract then we have the operation name as multiply and the divide so this web service provides four operations we can choose any one of them to work on the automation anywhere let's go with the operation add first let's copy this one from here and let's paste it over here now we need to provide the parameters for this add operation we saw in the add in this add operation we need to provide the two parameters as integer values for int a and int b so i'm going to provide the same over here let's click on plus and let's provide the name as int a and provide its value as 10 then create one more parameter as int b and provide its value as 20 so under the parameter details we chose this operation parameters so we provided the details as the name and the value pair in case we choose this raw data parameters then in such case we are going to provide the xml value over here so let's go with this operation parameters with the name and the value pair 
next option with us is to provide the authentication mode so if you have any authentication present inside the soap web service so you are going to select the authentication mode from here since this web service has no authentication so i will go with this no authentication in a similar way if you have the client certificate which is an optional field you can provide it over here either as a control room file desktop file or as a variable and next is with us is the output settings so in the output settings we are going to provide how we want to get the response as an output so let's see what all details we have over here so here we have the option to save the result as an xml file this is an optional field so we can save this response we can save this response as an xml file so let's see how we can do that so for that we need to provide a path over here so let's provide a path so let's say that i want to create the xml file in this location so i'm going to provide the path for here so let's copy this one from here and let's paste it over here and i'm going to give the name of my result file as result and the extension as .xml so that is result.xml and next we have the scope so do you want to get a complete response or a selected response so what does it mean so do you want to fetch this complete response or do you want to get any specific response let's say that you want to get the specific response let's say that you want to get only this value that is the addition value you want to get so how to do that first let's choose this complete response then we will see this selected response so let's select this complete response and and we will assign the result to a variable so let's create a variable from here let's give the name as add result and this is a variable of type string let's click on create and select and all the details we have provided over here first of all we will see with this complete response and next we will see with the selected response so let's click on apply and i'm going to add a message box over here so let's drag and drop it over here and inside enter message to display press f2 and from here i'm going to select the variable add result which we just created so let's click on insert let's click on apply let's save this part and i will quickly run this part to see how it works and my bot is running now it is executing the action soap command and here it displayed the result in the message box and since we have selected the complete response that's why it has provided the complete response from here so you see the message which we got and the response which we have over here are similar also since here we have provided the integers as 10 and 20 for the addition that is int a and int b we have provided the values as 10 and 20 that's why it has provided the result as 30 which is the addition of 10 and 20 so let's close this one and let's close this as well also we have provided the path of the xml file we have provided the path of the xml file so i will quickly check this file as well so let's move over here and this is the result file which gets generated if i open this one so here you see the exact response got generated as an xml file so let's move back to automation anywhere now let's say that instead of this complete response instead of this complete response you want to extract only the result that is the integer value which will be the addition of the integers which we provide over here so how to get this response how to get this specific response so let me show you if i move to automation anywhere and if i select this selected response so here we need to provide the x, x path expression so this xpath expression is used to locate an element in an xml document so i'm going to copy this one from here and i will show you how to create an xpath expression for this one so i'm going to open a notepad so let's select this notepad from here and let's paste it over here 
So this is my complete response from where I want to extract this value which is present under this add result element. So how to write an XPath expression for this? So I'm going to write the XPath expression. It will start with double slash, put a star and here we need to write local name, local name, put the brackets equal to and the element name. So I want this value which is inside this add result element. So let's copy this one from here and let's paste it over here. So this is my XPath expression ready which will be used to extract this one. So let's copy this one from here and I'm going to paste it inside the XPath expression. And next we have the option to select XML output. So do you want to select the value inner XML or outer XML? So of course I want to extract the value. I want to extract this value. So I have selected the option as value and there is no delimiter used. And again the result will be stored inside this add result string. So let's click on apply again. I will save this part. And let's quickly run it once more to see how it works now. And my bot is running now. So here you see we got the specific response now instead of the complete response because we have provided the XPath expression to fetch the value of this one. So let's close this one, move back to automation anywhere and close this as well. So that was all for this session guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and if you did give it a like and share with your friends and hit the bell button to get the updates on the latest videos and I will see you soon in the next one. Bye bye.